I am Kao Kato from Keio University in Japan. I start to explain my research exercise recognition system using facial image information from a mobile device. To keep healthy, exercise is important. Exercise has effects that not only prevent lifestyle diseases and the decline of physical functions, but also maintain cognitive functions and get rid of stress and anxiety. I often try to keep exercise my, for my health. However, I can't continue. I think almost all people sympathize with me. Thus, some people go to a gym and take a lesson from gym instructors because they observe us. It is a good way to continue the exercise, but it costs too much to do it every day. This problem can be solved by information systems that measure exercise automatically and give feedback to the user in place of a human. Many studies have been that can measure human movements automatically using a camera, such as an RGBD camera or a Kinect. In their system, a user does not have to attach the device, but a user must have a wide space for capturing the whole body or install the specific camera into their room, so it sometimes prevents users. In addition, if the system is complex, it is confused to users and users' motivation is declined. Recently, most people have mobile devices and these devices are embedded with sensors and cameras. The commercially available applications that use them for tracking human movements have been proposed. These applications can recognize exercises by estimating skeletal information from, her, from the whole body and detect if a user's pose is accurate or not. These systems use only a mobile device and it is easy to install, but the user needs to prepare a wide space or wear sports clothes. In our research, we aimed to help daily exercise management and improve a user's motivation. So we decide on three requirements for our system. The first is to use a mobile device that is familiar to our lives for reducing the install barrier. The second is not to track the whole body. In our system, a user needs only a table on which the device is put and the space which a user exercises and a user can wear whatever clothes he likes. The third is to recognize exercises as soon as possible for realizing real-time feedback to a user. This is a demonstration video. Due to HTTP communication, they are displayed five seconds late, but the recognition result is shown here and the repetition count is shown here. In our research, we developed an exercise recognition system by using a built-in camera on a mobile device. The system obtains a user's facial image from a camera. Next, it extracts the features on the face from the image and gets their coordinate changes as the time slays data. It makes their frequency components and recognizes kinds of exercise by using machine learning. In addition, it can count how many times a user exercises. We made an application for exercise measurement by using Unity and Python. If a user put the face in the camera view, the pink markers are displayed. Obtained time series data are sent and received via HTTP communication. The system recognizes kinds of exercises and counts the repetition of each exercise. Then it saves the records until after seven days. I explained the recognition flow at first, the system gets the user's facial feature changes. Then via pre-processing, the system makes a classifier for exercise recognition. 
To get data, we used the exercise measurement application, which I explained a while ago. When a user starts to exercise, it gets 60 seconds of time series data for each exercise. After completing each exercise, it writes obtained data into a CSV file. We used the single face tracker for Unity to extract 30 face points from a camera video. And every 30 points have two parameters X and Y. So a total of 60 tracking points are obtained. But these points don't have information about the Z axis so I made two distances as a z-axis parameter. One is this distance and the other is that distance. In total, the system uses 62 parameters for classifier training. Preprocessing is done for each feature of each exercises. At first, the system divides obtained data into every arbitrary frame then it removes trends and applies a Hunting window function. After that, it applies fast Fourier transform. At that time, the sample size is 128 and the sampling rate is 30 frames per second. If the data size after dividing is less than the sample size, it fills by zero padding from both sides. Our system uses the first half frequency component. Similarly, the system processes for all features of each exercises and labels data. After standardization, it makes an SVM classifier. Our system can count repetitions of exercise. Our method is robust to differences in the user's initial position and individual differences in face sizes. Concretely, when the two distances exceed or falls a threshold value with respect to D1. Our system judges the state switching. The threshold is changed in accordance with the kind of exercise recognized. In the experiment, we evaluated the recognition accuracy of the system at first. Eight participants took part in and did, ex did each exercise for 60 seconds and the order of exercise is random. We used a laptop computer as a mobile device. We divided the data every maximum period of their exercises. In this case, it is 100 frames, and we made 60 data for each exercise and each participant. And we selected nine kinds of exercises from the perspective of using our system at home easily. The six exercises are done while standing and the rest are done on the floor. The evaluation method is leave one subject out cross validation for all participants' data. The average classification accuracy for the proposed nine exercises was 88.2% and the processing time was 0 0.0066 seconds. The accuracy was high, so our system could recognize exercises effectively despite having differences in the state during exercise. In addition, we determined that the system can recognize exercises even if it uses another person's training model. Users may be able to use an accurate training model made by a gym instructor in the future. The classification accuracy of push-up exercises and back extension exercises was lower than the others, and they were sometimes misinterpreted as each other. During these two exercises, some users nearly looked not forward but down, and face tracking was occasionally lost. In addition, the camera was put on the floor and it could not get enough light, so our system could not sustain a high frame rate. Next, our system's frame rate was 30 frames per second, so the system needs about 3 seconds to recognize the kind of exercises. But this may be too long to in real time. On the other hand, the system cannot recognize with high accuracy if the window size is too short, there is a trade-off. In this experiment, we aimed to investigate the suitable window size that can enable the operation speed to be accelerated. 
we divided the obtained data every a multiple of five from five to 120 frames. As a result, after the windows had accounted for over 70 frames, the classification accuracy was over 90% and roughly stable. The average period of all participants' exercises was about 81 frames, so the suitable window size may be close to the average period of the exercise. However, the accuracy was over 80% after 45 frames. We may be also able to use a shorter window size instead of declining accuracy. Next, to accelerate the operation speed, we evaluated accuracy in the case of using fewer features. Via a principal component analysis, we confirmed that 60 tracking points are moving together on each axis during exercise. So we selected four features, consists of two distances and two average coordinate values. As a result, the average classification accuracy was 87.1% and the processing time became 1 15th. The accuracy of back extension ex exercise decreased 17.2% and the floor exercises were misinterpreted further. Therefore, the operation speed improved, but using only four features may not be able to supplement the partial loss of information. Finally, during exercise, a user's face does not necessarily appear at the center of the camera view, and it is uncomfortable for a user to do exercise with taking care of his position. Then we investigated if the user's standing position is influenced the accuracy or not. In this experiment, we recruited three participants newly, and they did only the standing exercises. In the light figure, we showed 10 circles, as the standing positions. We, cho we chose this blue circle as a training data and the other positions as test data. Considering the previous result, we used only four features, only four features for recognition. The average, the classification accuracy was over 80% at all positions. So we determined that the standing position does not influence the accuracy. However, at almost all positions that were more than 120 centimeters away, the face tracking did not activate at first. At that time, participants approached the device for a second and it was solved. In addition, at all positions that were 150 centimeters away, the face tracking sometimes failed during the exercises, so they did similarly. From the result, our system cannot be influenced by the standing position, so multiple people also may be able to measure exercises simultaneously. In order to realize, we have to change the face tracking middleware because it cannot track multiple faces and cannot track accurately if the face is far away. Our system had some limitations. The first is a lack of face tracking. Next, our system is weak against direct sunlight. And our system needs a mobile device that can use face tracking and machine learning. Recent devices can execute face tracking, but many of them cannot do machine learning by Python. In addition, our middleware system, system cannot track multiple faces. Finally, the classification accuracy of the face of the floor exercises is particularly lower because the individual differences are bigger in their exercises. In the future, we'll install facial part tracking, such as eyebrow tracking and a machine learning method that is usable on a smartphone. And we'll use another middleware that can track multiple faces and realize multiple people's simultaneous measurements. Finally, we aim to make a method for estimating an exercise pace and intensity to point out and improve a user's individual differences. That's my conclusion. Thank you for your listening.